Abba Yahuwah, I just come to you in this day, my King. Abba, I thank you that you are the great I am that is on your throne. Abba, I thank you that you have put from the beginning a pattern that you have shown us from your word in creation, how you are wanting to be served and the pattern that you have given us has continued throughout the generations that's been generation upon generation that you have been trying to bring us back to a pattern that you installed from the beginning. And Abba, I just want to thank you because if we can understand the bigger work that you have done right from inception, right from the beginning, the bigger work that you have done in order to be able to bring about your purposes and your plans, it's so much easier. And when we have a leader who is there to lead us and guide us, it makes it so much easier when the leader is you. And when you are the one who wants to be able to take us by the hand and lead us every step of the way, then we know that your plans are good. You say, for I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, to bring you a future, to bring you a hope. But Abba, Father, because we go our own way and because we do our own things, that is why destruction is at hand. And that is why right now the whole world is under the sway of the enemy. But I praise and I thank you because you are still on your throne. And you will have a remnant of people through whom you want to work. And that will be a light. And I thank you, Abba Yahuwah, for this teaching. And I thank you for the work that you are doing in this time. Because you have showed me that if we do not understand to be able to overcome these things in this very first six chapters of the book of Genesis, we are going to seriously battle in the days that are going to come ahead. And yeah, already we are going to be presented with many things. And tonight we will look at a genealogy, a righteous genealogy and a wicked genealogy. And Abba Father, I just want to thank you that you are going to open up the mind of my understanding and that you will be able to speak through my lips the very oracle that's going to come from your heart. Thank you, Father, that I commit this discipleship training to you, knowing that you are the one who is going to steer this teaching. You are the one that is doing the work, as you said to me. You will add the people that you want to add, and you are going to bring the words that need to be spoken. So I thank you, Father, that my trust and my faith is in you, as you are the one that is going to bless every person that is on this group, as you have handpicked each one of them to be here and to be listening to these messages in this time as we see the darkness rolling in upon this earth. It's getting darker. But I thank you, Abba Father, because you are going to bring your light to those that are truly seeking you. I praise and I thank you for this in Yahushua's name. Amen. Praise Abba Father for this teaching that we are that we are have embarked in. And I thank Abba for that which he has which he is doing as truly last week he has showed me um that if we are not going to be able to overcome the enemy and our flesh, because at the end of the day, the enemy attacks our flesh. And if we are not going to overcome the enemy, Hasatan, and we are going to submit to our flesh, we are not going to be able to withstand the things that are going to come upon the earth in the days ahead. And he made me understand and realize how important it is because once again, in the last days, Hasatan is going to be given control over this earth. 
and he's going to run rampage and the darkness is going to increase ever more than what it is already now. And that is why he needs a people that are really going to have to be able to overcome Hasatan and his ways and overcome their flesh man, which is where he will use us because he feeds upon our flesh nature. That is why Abba is in this hour now really wanting us to be a people that need to overcome. So we are just going to recap last week as we had a look and we focused a little bit more in the understanding of what our flesh man is. That our flesh man is really made up of a soul man. And that soul man is our mind, our will and our emotion. Everything making up the flesh man is making up a body. This is the tent, it's the body that carries the real person who is a spirit being who was created in the image of Abba Yahuwah. But this spirit being has a soul, a nefesh, which is a three-part being made up of a mind, a will, and emotions. And unfortunately, where the mind goes, where the emotions go, that the will lines up with, the man follows. So the man, which is this body, is either going to follow the nefesh, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, if it's lined up with the evil inclination of our evil nature, it's the body is going to go in that direction. But if our mind, our will, and our emotions is lined up with the word of Abba Father, then our spirit man is alive and we will then go in the direction of the Father's ways. And so we looked at 3 John 2 that we saw where he speaks and he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health even just as your soul prospers. So we looked at that word prospering and we looked at this is the this is the easy way, this is the successful and the succeeding and the prospering on a journey. And that health we understood that that is a doctrine that is free from being corrupt. It's truth. It is a knowledge of truth. And it's free from any error, any mixture of error. We also understood that the soul is the nefesh. That's the Hebrew word for soul. It's nefesh. And it's made up of the mind, the will, and the emotions. And the soul man dwells in the heart, which is the lev. So our heart, when we speak about the heart, the heart is the Hebrew word for lev. But what is made up of that heart is where our our soul man is, which is our psyche, our intellect. And this is the breath of life, and this is the living soul, which is made up of our desires, which is made up of our affections, which is made up of our mind, our emotions, our passions, our will. It's the inner being of who we are. And this ultimately makes up our character. So our character is either going to be an evil character, depending on what our mind, our will, and our emotions focuses on. Because we looked at Proverbs 23, verses 6 to 7, that says, Do not eat bread of one having an evil eye, nor desire its delicacies. For as he reckons, as he thinks in his life, in his heart, so is he. So what do we meditate on? What do we think of? What do we focus on? What do we watch? Because an evil eye. And so from there we established many things because we established that if we're going to look upon the wrong things, if we're going to meditate upon the wrong things, then we are going to go in the wrong direction. So that is why the devil wants us to be contaminated in our minds, in our emotions, in our will. And that is why we need to understand that 
a good man brings forth what is good out of the good treasure of his heart, which is his mind, his will, and his emotions. And so that is why we need to understand that the Father is wanting to bring us to a place of having to heal our mind, our will, our emotions, because, you know, we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of wounds and there's wounds in our soul, man, that has come from our past, maybe, from things that have happened to us, that maybe someone has done us harm. And those are the things that sometimes come up because of things that reoccur within us when someone speaks to us in a certain way and there is a wound in our soul man that is in our mind because, say, for example, there was a person that spoke to you that was controlling and manipulating and angry and maybe raised their voice at you and was that way towards you and the minute something comes up like that in your life it automatically takes you back to that wound in your soul man and then you reject whatever's coming your way because it's taking you back into an area of pain but what the father wants us to do is he wants us to bring these areas before him he wants us to bring our minds before him when we're going to go to that area of maybe going to get angry or maybe going to go into fear or whatever the area is that we might be struggling with to be able to come back to the root of it and bring that pain and bring that hurt. If, say, for example, someone says something to you and you feel rejected and because now maybe they spoke to you in a way that maybe wasn't loving and immediately you go into a place of rejection and immediately the enemy will be able to take you to that place of where you've been wounded in order for you to be able to now meditate in that place and stay in that place and now see the person as being a villain when at the end of the day it's your area that you need to overcome. That's why I'll sometimes say to people, you've got to get over yourself. Because at the end of the day, we need to understand that Father will bring things in our lives to expose the areas in our lives of where we still need to heal. And so, my goodness, all I know is that in this week, I've spoken to so many people just this week and last week. And there's so many people going through so many things and people are going through so many tests and we are being weighed in the scales because of the decisions that we're going to make based on the things coming our way. And I have understood that if we do not overcome these areas, we are going to succumb to many things that are going to take us down a path of destruction. And the Father is now wanting to clearly bring us to a place of where we can learn to overcome these things in our lives that are going to hold us back from going forward. Because we are going to see tonight truly there are many that fall by the wayside in the fact that what we are going to allow to control our lives is going to make all the difference whether we are going to be those that are going to go forward with the Father or not. And that is why the Father is looking for an overcoming people now. And so the most important thing is that, you know, we need to forgive people. We need to release people. So you need to forgive. Then you need to release or you need to repent. Maybe there's some areas where you need to repent, where you need to ask someone else for forgiveness. And you need to repent of your own actions and of your own ways. Then you need to release it to the Father. But the most important thing that we must remember, we must ask our Father to come and bring healing in that area where we need healing. Because that area in your life, you cannot heal of yourself. Only he can bring the healing balm of Gilead. He brings his balm of his love, of his grace, of his mercy 
to come in that area of your life that you will still be holding on to your pain. So maybe someone speaks to you in a certain way and immediately you react as opposed to respond. <laughs> I understand this reacting, responding, because this is something that I have had to now really deal with. Sometimes people speak to me in a certain way or they say something and immediately I will react and I will react in anger. Now, the reacting and the responding is how we react and respond. Say, for example, to medicine. When we take medicine, say the doctor gives, prescribes you some medication. If you respond to it, it's going to bring healing in your body. If you react to it, you're going to have an adverse effect and it's going to bring a rash and it's going to bring, it's going to make it worse and therefore it's going to be destructive in your body. So now you understand the way we are either going to react to things or respond to things is going to be make all the difference whether it's going to bring healing to us or whether it's going to bring destruction. It's going to cause a rash. It's going to cause pain. It's going to cause everything to come up that's going to bring a reaction in us that's going to bring destruction. And that is why we are all in this firing pot at the moment. It's like we're in this boiling pot and and this pot is boiling all around us. And, you know, we cannot put ourselves in a little cocoon and think that we can hide away in a cocoon and keep ourselves away from the world because then we are not going to be able to um, go through anything because at the end of the day, the world around you is being put there to be able to help you to expose the things in you that are there. So if you're driving in your car and someone is going to cut you off, what is going to come out of your mouth? And now this man is going to start, or this woman or whatever it is that maybe cut you off, you're going to speak up in a bunch of things and they're going to show you a sign and they're going to go off at you and you're going to react in your flesh and in your Way because who does do do they think they are and why did they cut you off and why did they do this and do you see this is just the way we go about life but we need to understand that the father is bringing us to a place of saying my child your garden needs to be intact and you need to take care of this garden and you're going to need to be able to take your soul man your mind your will, your emotions, because now you want to get angry, you're going to need to take it under control and say, you know what, I'm not going to go there. Bless you, bless you. While they're cursing me, I'm going to bless them. While they're showing me a sign, I'm going to say, my father bless you. And I'm going to pull out every blackjack that you're trying to put on me right now. But if you're going to take that area and you're going to continue to dwell on it in the day and you're going to go down a road, you are just going to open up a wound for yourself there that is just never going to heal and you're just going to allow the thing to fester. What happens to a wound that is starting to heal but it keeps getting scratched? If you got a wound and you keep scratching the scab off, Will it ever heal? No. And that is why we are now in the time of when the Father is saying, don't allow your pain and your wounds to become an idol in your life to make an excuse for you to stay where you are. Okay, so maybe you were molested. Maybe you were rejected. Maybe you've gone through all these things in your life, but how long are you going to stay in that place? of keep dwelling in self-pity as opposed to bringing it before the Father and saying, Father, come and do a work so that I can overcome this area, heal this pain so that I may move on. Because there's too many people walking around with so many wounds and we are like a festering wound that just is never healing because we do not allow the Father to bring the blood of Yeshua to be able to come and cover that and bring restoration and healing. And so somewhere along the line, this was now um, exactly what happened with Cain. 
I don't believe that this was the first thing that happened with Cain. Now, there might have been other things that we don't know about because, remember, we don't have the account. We only know about this one thing. But who knows if Cain has already got issues maybe with his brother. Cain already, you know, the brother irritates him and, you know, they've been having a few words with each other. We don't know. But that's why the father addressed him. And so we see that Cain eventually goes into a, a land of nod, which is a land of unrest. And then we saw that the Israelites also rebelled. And because of their rebellion, they also stayed in the wilderness, which was also a place of unrest. And the Father is trying to bring us into a place of rest. The Father is trying to bring us into a place of where we need to understand that he is wanting to do a greater work in us. And so Abba has showed us that, you know, what Abba showed us really is that Cain didn't do the wrong thing in offering the sacrifice. Cain did the right thing in offering the sacrifice. But the problem was that he did what he thought was right in his own eyes. He had his own standard of righteousness. He had his own standard of how he's going to please the Father. I'll just bring him an offering. It's fine. So there is a way that seems right unto man, but its way will lead to death. And we're really going to look at this today. And from here, we're really going to see two bloodlines running. One that is set apart, obedient to the Father, and one doing its own thing and going its own way. But it's not in obedience to the Father. So we were going to pick up the story again in Genesis chapter 4 from verses 18. And it says from verses 17, and it says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Hannah. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of the son Hanok. And Hanok was born Erad. And Erad brought forth Mahayahal. And Mehahal brought forth Methuselah, and Methuselah brought forth Lamech, and Lamech took for himself two wives, and the name of the one was Adah, and the name of the second was Tila. And Adah bore Yabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents with livestock. And his brother's name was Yubal. He was the father of those who play the lyre and the flute. And for Sila, she bore, she also bore Tabul Cain, a smith of all kinds of tools in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tabul Cain was Nama. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Sila, hear my voice, wives of Lamech, listen to my words, for I have killed a man for wounding me even a young man for hunting, for hurting me. For Cain is avenged sevenfold and Lamech seventy-sevenfold. And Adam knew, okay, so here I want to be able to bring the scenario where we are seeing of here that there is a genealogy now that has come forth from Cain. So Cain has gone into this place of nod, which means unrest, it means place of wandering, unrest and wandering. And now he has built a genealogy. But now look and see, here is this, this Lamech that has continued in the footsteps of his great-great-grandfather Cain because what has he done? He killed a man for wounding him and he's and he killed another young man for hurting him. So you see where Cain killed his brother just because of hatred in his heart or anger in his heart. The sin is escalated now because one has wounded him. One has, has, um, for I have killed a man for wounding me and another young man for hurting me. And so now you see that even as, you know, the sin is now getting bigger, 
because now one is wounding, one is hurting, and he's killed already two men. And so this is just escalating in this bloodline of Cain. And this is why we need to understand this bloodline, because we need to understand that here we see a genealogy that now comes forth of a breed of people that are outside of the will of the Father. They have been outside of this place where the Father is now, where there was a people that was protected in a camp. They've now gone outside of this camp, and now they become more wicked. And here we see Cain's bloodline is a bloodline that has its own standards of doing things. because. You don't hear anything about the fact that they're serving the father in any way. And now they're getting more wicked because now he's already killed two men, this, 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 um, Lamech. And it is a bloodline that will do its own thing and it is led by rebellion and it's going its own way. And that is why we are going to look at a few scriptures that talks about this. Because we need to understand that throughout this Bible, we are going to understand that there is two genealogies that are going to run on the earth. As a matter of fact, eventually there's going to be three. Because there's going to be those that are totally wicked in the world that don't even know anything to do with the Father. And then there are those that will say that they know the Father, say that they've given their lives to the Father, yet they do their own thing and they go their own way. And then there is another bloodline that is a faithful bloodline, a righteous bloodline that wants to serve the Father, that wants to walk in the ways of the Father. So we are going to look at Judges 21 verses 25. So if we look at Judges 21 verses 25, it says, In those days... There was no sovereign in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Wow. If there was ever a scripture that is repeating itself today, is the fact that you see, if you do not have a sovereign, and who is the sovereign? The sovereign that we received is the king, which is Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. He is the sovereign that should be leading and guiding our lives so that he is the one who is ruling over our piece of clay, our piece of ground, so that we may be able to walk in the ways of the Father and be obedient to him so that we do not do what we think is right in our own eyes. We are being led by him and we are being led by his way and his will and his plan. But if we do not have a sovereign, so if you do not have Messiah Yahushua, who is the sovereign, the king over your life, then who are you going to be able to be following? You are following another sovereign, which means you are going to follow Hasatan, and then you will do what's right in your, you do what you think is right in your own eyes. So if we do not have a set of rules, I mean, just think about it. Imagine we didn't have rules on the road. Imagine we were just told that the rules have all been done away with. We can all drive on the road the way we want. My goodness. There would be total chaos on our road. Why? Because there has to be rules by which to do things. Father was giving them a pattern in how he wanted to be served. And if the pattern is not there, then that means man becomes a God unto themselves and does what he thinks is right in his own eyes and he's got his own standard of what he thinks is good. And this is the way mankind leads right now because this is where we are. If we do not have a good king, that is ruling over the land, that is in the ways of a father. Each man does what they think is right in their own eyes and we all have our own standards and 
We all think that what we're doing is right and this is the way it is. And that is what we need to understand from the beginning, that there is a pattern, because if we do not conform to a pattern, we become rebellious and we become doing things that we think is right in our own eyes, because that's exactly what Cain did. Cain did what he thought was right in his own eyes. And that is why from there he started a genealogy. And we are going to see two genealogies that are going to run over here. And so we continue to look at scriptures. And so let's go to Proverbs 14. We're going to go to Proverbs now. And we're going to go to Proverbs 14, verse 12. And in Proverbs 14, verse 12, um, oh, it will help if I were to get to Proverbs. Um, Proverbs 14, verse 12 says, There is a way which seems right to a man, but its end, but its end is the way of death. So do you see, there's many people that are on a way, and in their own eyes, the way that they are on seems right because they're trying to do their own thing. There was that way that Cain thought that was right because he was offering the father an offering, and he thought that his way was right, but in the end, his way led to death. And so that is why we need to understand that there is a way that we will think that is right in our own eyes, in our own standard, in our own way of doing things, that we think we will be pleasing to the Father, but in the end, that way can lead to death when it is of our own understanding and not according to his pattern. Then we look at Proverbs chapter 16. Let's look at Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 25. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 25 says again, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. My goodness, twice already in Proverbs, the same thing is being said in chapter 14, and it repeats itself in chapter 16. I think it's important. If the Father is saying the same thing twice, you must know it's important. Then we look at Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12 verses 15 says, The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he who listens to advice is wise. So now do you understand whose voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the voice of the enemy? that is going to lead you into self-destruction, or are you going to listen to the voice of the Father? And that is why the more we know his word, the more we read his Bible, the more we start to know what is right from what is wrong, and we will not be tripped up, and we will not be a fool, because the enemy will trip us up and say, no, 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 you know what, that's fine. This is right. Go your way. You're not going to surely die if you eat this fruit. Oh my goodness, look at this. I picked it with my hand and I gave it to you and you didn't die. So you're not going to die if you eat it either. She didn't die a physical death, but she certainly died a spiritual death. And she was kicked out of a garden of where she was intimacy with the father. And so that's why a fool is a fool who is arrogant in his own ways. And that is exactly what, at the end of the day, what Cain became. Because Cain became a fool because he didn't listen to the advice of the wise. He didn't listen to the advice that the father was giving him. He didn't listen to advice that was given to him. So I say, who are the people that you have in your life that is speaking in your ear? Do you have people in your life that is speaking good things in your ear and the right things in your ears and trying to help you because maybe you're going to go on a self-destructive path because you might be wanting to follow your own wicked way, thinking that it is the Father when something is just like, for example, when in the Garden of Eden, you know, Eve was already deceived. She already had a lie that had come into the camp. And everything that was going to be spoken to her after that was going to make her fall. And so when we build things on a lie, we have a problem. 
Imagine when, imagine you are in a place and everything that you believe to be the truth, you find that is a lie. The lie that is there is what's going to bring us into deception, which is going to bring us into disobedience, which is going to bring us to come and receive a curse in our lives. Because a rebellious person is not going to receive anything from the Father. And that is why the Father needs to bring his people now into truth more than ever. Because it's not just the case of us being religious where we go to church and we listen to what a pastor says and this is what we've learned for however long we've learned all these things, these doctrines that have been given us. But imagine it was what was founded on just religious doctrines and this is what was given to us by our forefathers for hundreds of years and we've just followed suit. But we've never really taken the time to really go and discover the truth. And so that's why the Father is taking us on a journey of discipling people because Yeshua didn't say, just go and convert people. He didn't say, go convert them so that they can be saved. He said, go and make disciples and go and disciple, make disciples of the nations. Teaching them everything that I have commanded you. And so the Father is not interested in a bunch of converts. People that just go into church and now all of a sudden they give their life and this is it. Oh man, I've given my life, I'm saved and that's it, I'm going to heaven. That's not what the Bible tells you to be done. The Bible is telling us that he says that you are to go make disciples. Teaching them, which means they need to be taught. And they need to be taught the truths of this word. And so, we look at Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21 verses 2 and 3 says, All a man's ways are right in his own eyes. But Yahuwah weighs the heart. So you see, even that which we think we do right, we might think we're doing it. So we do something, but yet at the end of the day, is your heart still doing it with a wicked way? So you might do something. You might say something, but at the end of the day, the inclination of the heart is still wicked. He weighs the heart. To do righteous and right ruling is more acceptable to Yahuwah than a slaughtering. So at the end of the day, the father wants obedience to him. He just doesn't want a sacrifice. He doesn't want you to just bring him a sacrifice. He wants the obedience of your heart. He was trying to deal with Cain's heart. He was trying to say to Cain, Cain, do you not understand? You have a rebellious heart. You're bringing me an offering. It's not about the offering, Cain. It's about the fact that I need you to be able to see that there's things going on in your heart that's making you bring me an offering that is not acceptable because you have an evil root within your heart. So the heart is the lev. And the lev is what is dwelling in our hearts. That's why he says out of the abundance of the ma- out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. What is in the heart that is going to cause you to speak what you speak? What is in your mind, what is in your will, what is in your emotions that's causing you to do what you do? So he says, a man's ways are right in his own eyes. So we might think we're doing so right in our own eyes, but you're who are ways the heart. And at the end of the day, he knows that the heart, if it is still rebellious and doesn't want to do what is right, just like Cain, And what are we doing? We're fooling ourselves at the end of the day because the Father is still weighing your heart. So even though you can go and say to somebody, I'm sorry, but you do it with an attitude and you don't really mean it with your lips, you're speaking it with your lips, but everything inside you is still not with a heart that is genuinely repentant. It doesn't help you to offer Father lip service. It doesn't help you to come to the Father and say to the Father, look, I'm sorry, but you are just remorseful that maybe you got caught in your sin and you're not really repentant because of the sin itself. And at the end of the day, we need to understand the Father knows the intent of our hearts. 
And that is why he's looking at our hearts now, people. He's not looking at the good works that we're doing. And this is where the church is going to fall short in the day and age that we're in. Because there's many people that can go to church and they read their Bibles and they pray two hours and they do all these things. But are their hearts still wicked? Are there still many wicked things within them? And yet you'll get other people that might not do all these good works, but yet their hearts are good. Their hearts have got love towards a fellow brother. And I stand in awe because, I mean, there are many people that pride themselves in being so religious, going to church, but yet there will be such hatred towards a fellow brother if a brother does something to harm them. Yet the Father loves us unconditionally. And so we look at Proverbs 3 verse 7. The last one in Proverbs that we look at. And now you see how many scriptures we've read just dealing with the same issue. Just the same issue is what we are dealing with, Rebecca. Proverbs 3 verse 7 says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahuwah and turn away from evil. So you see, it's the fear of Yahuwah that is the beginning of wisdom. And why do we people not have wisdom? Why do people not have wisdom? Because we have not learned to fear the Father. You see, if Cain feared the Father in understanding that he was the creator of the universe, in understanding that he's the one who gives life and he's the one who takes life, and he's the one who puts the very breath of life that you are breathing, and he's the one that if you're going to rebel, if your child is going to continue to do what's wrong, do you not think that that child is going to get a hiding? Or that you're going to reprimand that child? But yet we seem to have this understanding in the world that we're living in right now, in the time that we're living in, that we can just carry on and do whatever we like. And we do not need to go through anything in this life. Man, I can just steal, kill, destroy, behave like the devil itself, and no harm is going to come my way. Oh my goodness, how deceived have we become? Because judgment is going to come our way. And that is why we need to understand that the Father is wanting us to be able to come right. And so, he's telling us clearly, uh, we are not to become wise in our own eyes. We are to be humble. That's why it says, submit to Yahuwah. Resist the devil and he will flee. So we need to submit to the Father. And then we will resist the devil. And then he's going to flee. But you see, Why is mankind in the trouble that they are today? Because we've become gods unto ourselves. Because man has now become so clever that they have not no need of Abba Yahuwah anymore because we are the ones that have the solution to everything. And this is why mankind is in grave danger at the moment because we are getting darker and darker by the hour. Because now mankind is even wanting to create another species of mankind. And so we do not fear him. And if Cain had feared the father, he would have turned away from evil. And this is our problem. Do we really fear Abba Yahuwah? Or what kind of teaching have we received? We've received that. He loves us. Oh, he does. I ask you a question. If you've got a child and you love that child, do you allow that child to continue to, to back chat you and, 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 and re- behave like the devil itself? And it's okay. You're not going to reprimand it. What do you think is going to become of that child? The Bible says train up a child in the way that they're to go in the, in the father so that they never depart from him. And you are to spare. If you spare the rod, you spoil the child. So what makes you think that the Father is going to allow us to carry on in our rebellious way and he's not going to reprimand us in any way. He's just going to just continue to love us and accept us and there will be nothing that will befall us. Remember, his love is unconditional. It's like a a, a parent with a child. You love that child unconditional. You love that child irrespective. You know what? Even if that child goes into the gutter, you are still as a parent going to be there to help that child because you are... You brought that child into the earth and you love that child. 
But you cannot allow that child to continue to do go its own way without having to bring a reprimand and a discipline. And this is where we are today in the world that we live in today. We are not fearing the Father. We do not fear what He's going to do because we have grace. And in this grace is the license to sin. There's no license for sinning. Grace did not come to give us a license to sin. Grace has come to be able to tell us to say no to sin because we now have give, we've been given Messiah Yahushua and we have been given the power of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, to be able to help us now. We don't have excuses. So, we continue to read our story as we look at the end of Genesis chapter 4 and now we see a new genealogy that is now going to start again. And so by Genesis chapter 4 in verses 24 it says, um, sorry, in verse 25 it says, And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore a son and called his name Shep. For Yahuwah has appointed me another seed instead of Habal because Cain had killed him. So here we see Adam knows his wife, Hava, Eve, and she is going to bear another son. And she bears a son, Seth. And from Seth, is now going to start another genealogy. And Seth, to him also, a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. Then it was begun to call on the name of Yahuwah. Wow. So by the time we get to the third generation, so you've got Adam, then you've got Seth, and then you've got Enosh. Up until now, they did not call on the name of Yahuwah. Only from the third generation, you start to call on the name of Yahuwah. Then they started to call on the name of Yahuwah. yod heh vav heh. Because in the third genealogy, we must understand. What does a name represent? Abba Yahuwah's name is not just a name. They are now going to be able to be a genealogy that is sealed in the name of Yahuwah. They started to call on the name of Yahuwah, and he's the one who is the one who is going to lead them and guide them because a name is the character of that person. You know, you might know my name. You might say, oh, it's Natalia. But you don't know the person, Natalia. You just know the name. Until you come to know me, you know the character of the person who I am. And so at the end of the day, Abba Yahuwah has a name. yod Hey vav Hey, Yahuwah. There's many different ways of people saying his name. And as we continue in our discipleship program, we will get there to understanding his name. But this is the name that he has revealed to me. He's revealed his name to me. And I was in, an, in a relationship with him, not even knowing what his name was, calling him Lord and God, and yet not knowing his name. But when I came to know his name, I came to understand more intimately the character of that name. And this genealogy is going to have to represent the character of the name that he is revealing. Because everything about Abba Yahuwah's name is everything to who he is and what he represents and who he represents. And so... When we start looking at Genesis chapter 5, we look and we see that this book of the genealogy of Adam, we start again with Adam. In the day that 
Alua created man, he made him in the likeness of Alua. Male and female, he created them and he blessed them and called them and called their name Adam in the day they were created. So already when he created Adam, he created Adam with already Eve in mind. And that's why then people want to say that maybe Adam had another wife because he created them. And then he gave Adam a wife. But we read very clearly that we saw that when in Genesis 2 verses 7 says, And Yahuwah Elua formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils breath of lives. So out of man was going to come lives and he was going to form Eve. And then from Eve and Adam there was going to come lives of this genealogy. And so Adam lived 132. 30 years and brought forth a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Sheth. Seth. And after he brought forth Sheth, the days of Adam were 800 years and he brought forth sons and daughters. So all the days of Adam lived were 930 years and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and brought forth Enosh. And after he brought forth Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and brought forth sons and daughters. Now, we are going to read this for you to understand. He brought forth sons and daughters, sons and daughters, sons and daughters. So please do not only see the one. This is the one and that one brought sons and daughters. So we're going to understand this. So all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. And Enosh lived 90 years and brought forth Canaan, Canaan, Canaan. And after he brought forth Canaan, Enosh lived 815 years and brought forth sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh were 905 years and he died. And Canaan lived 70 years and he brought forth Mahalalal. Now understand, this is a genealogy, and all these people are bringing forth sons and daughters. And if they've lived for 900 years, you can understand how many sons and daughters there are. Okay? So, I mean, if he, if he lived for 950 years, you can imagine, he brought forth sons and daughters. So it wasn't just one or two, there were sons and daughters. So these people are multiplying on the earth. From this righteous genealogy, we're not even going to talk about the genealogy of Cain, because Cain had his own genealogy going, because we've already read Cain's genealogy in Genesis chapter 4. Cain also had a genealogy that was running down. After he brought forth Mahalalal, Cain lived 840 years and brought forth sons and daughters. So all the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. And Mahalal lived 65 years and brought forth Jared, Yared. And after he brought forth Yared, Mahalalal lived 830 years and brought forth sons and daughters. So all the days of Mahalal were 895 years and he died. And Yared lived 160 years and brought forth Hanok. Hanok. And after he brought forth Hanok, Yared lived 800 years and brought forth sons and daughters. So all the days of Yared were 962 years and he died. And Hanok lived 65 years and brought forth Methuselah. And after he brought forth Methuselah, Hanok, walked with Alua 300 years and brought forth sons and daughters. So all the days of Hanok were 365 years, and Hanok walked with Alua. Then he was no more, for Alua took him. And Methuselah lived 187 years and brought forth Lamech. And after he brought forth Lamech, Methuselah lived 780 years and brought forth sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. 
And Lamech lived 192 years and brought forth a son and called his name Noah, saying, This one does comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which Yahuwah has cursed. So yeah, we see that there is a genealogy here. And we need to understand that there is 10 genealogies. Now, what I have done is I have gone and highlighted in my Bible Adam and then Seth and then Enosh and then Cainan and then Mahalalal and then Yered and then Hanok and then Methuselah and then Lamech and then Noah. Because all in all, there is 10 genealogies. At the third genealogy, on the third day when Yahushua resurrected from the dead, interesting, third day is very important. With Enosh, they started to call on the name of Yahuwah. The sixth genealogy is Yared, Jared. This is going to be very important for us to understand the genealogy of Jared because next week we are going to read from the book of Enoch. And we are going to understand on the sixth genealogy on the number of man, there is going to be the sixth genealogy is going to be a destruction that's going to come. And then on the seventh genealogy, which is Hanok, which is the other father's perfect number, he takes Hanok, Enoch, that doesn't even die because he walked with the father. And then Methuselah, and then Lamech, and then Noah being the tenth generation. And this is all very important because at the end of the day we need to understand the importance of this because next week we are going to look at each one of these genial, which each one of these, um, what their names mean. We are going to understand this genealogy that is being given to us and we are going to understand that the father is taking us and is giving us a pattern for us to understand and we are going to look at what has happened because you need to understand their sons and daughters 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 so all of them are bringing forth sons and daughters so they are building a genealogy and this is a genealogy that has to be a righteous genealogy standing before the Father because this is a genealogy that is coming from Adam and Eve that would have taught them the same as they did Cain and Abel in this place of security where they would have been able to serve the Father in the way that he wants to be served. But something happens and we are going to read next week as we continue embarking on our journey, we are going to read a few chapters from the book of Enoch for us to understand, to give us a better understanding of what our Bible doesn't give us so that we can understand when we get to Genesis chapter 6, for us to understand what has happened that has caused a destruction in the fall of man that is finally going to bring about a flood. Something drastic must have happened. And once again, we are going to look at how man follows after the lust of the flesh because again, Hasatan comes into the camp and brings destruction. So, Praise Abba Father that we are embarking on our journey here to be able to understand that the Father is wanting us to understand that when man does things in their own ways and does not fear him and goes in his own path and doesn't stay in the security of that which is given them, they are going to self-destruct. And this is unfortunately the pattern that we are going to see unfold throughout the pages of our Bibles because it's been where we are still today. And if we are preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah that I have, you know that it's not for us to be prepared to go to heaven 
but it's for us to be able to be prepared to reign and rule with him for a thousand year millennial reign, then we have to understand that we better be a people that are going to get it right. Because we are being prepared for a kingdom that is going to come for a thousand year millennial reign where we are going to reign with a king. But a king has a way and he's got an order. Because otherwise, each man does what they think is right in their own eyes because there is no sovereign ruling over them. So, praise Abba Father for his word and I thank you Abba Father for your word. I thank you Father that there is such wealth that you are revealing to us in the first few chapters of this book of Genesis. There is shit in the beginning. For us to understand what has happened in these chapters. We understand a genealogy that is going to go in its own way. That's going to bring murder and destruction. Destruction of a mankind people that you created in your image. And we are going to understand a people that need to walk according to your purposes and your plans. And we need to understand these things because if we don't, with the days that are going to get darker and darker ahead of us, we are not going to be able to overcome. Because these things are unfolding before our very eyes where once again the enemy is presenting us many things so that we do not fear you, we do not fear you, but instead turn to our flesh. Turn to the comfort of what we want to do. We elate ourselves and we exalt ourselves in doing what we think is right in our own eyes because we think it's pleasing to you. And so, Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for this message and I want to thank you for what you are doing. And I want to thank you that you are working in each and every person in this group. I bring each and every person before you, Abba. That is a part of this discipleship group that is listening to the manna that is going to come from, from your throne. And I pray, Abba Father, for each of them. And I pray, Abba, that you will help each of us to walk this journey out with you. Father, where there are still wounds in our hearts of pain, of things that's been done to us, that is still oozing the pus and the blood, I pray that you will come and bring the healing balm of the blood of your Shua Mashiach to come and bring deliverance and healing in us so that we may truly become a people an army that you're wanting to raise up in these last days to bring glory and honor to your name. And so I thank you, Abba Father, that you come and do a deeper work in each one of us. Father, you know where each one is in their walk with you right now. You know where each one is in the area where they're struggling right now. And I pray, Abba, that you meet them in that place. I thank you for your word, Father. I thank you that your word brings life, it brings healing, it brings deliverance. And I thank you that you will bring all of that in our lives, bring deliverance, bring healing, and bring life in our lives. In Yahushua's name I pray this. Amen. Amen.